Well, we, uh, we when we created the NBA here about 15 years ago, um, we looked at who our market would be. You know, we're kind of isolated up here in, in Texas Hill Country. And uh, if we had a traditional MBA program here, we'd probably burn through the available local students here. The Texas Hill Country is one of the most beautiful places on earth. In this podcast, recent Hill Country resident Tom Fox visits with the people and organizations that make this one of the most unique areas of Texas. Join Tom as he explores the people, places, and their activities of the Texas Hill Country. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back for another episode of the Hill Country Podcast. Today, I have with me Dr. Mark Quiddle, and he is the head of the uh, MBA program here at Schreiner University. I hope I've got all that right. Uh, Dr. Quiddle, first mm-hmm. of all, thank you so much for taking this time to visit with me today. Thank you. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about your academic and professional background? Well, I started out... Uh, actually in the U.S. military. I had a career in the U.S. military, the Air Force, for 27 years, uh, which included a a long tour at the Pentagon. And I retired in uh, 1998 and uh, jumped to the corporate world, uh, where I was a regional manager for a company called Heil Environmental Industries. I was their regional manager for Africa, the Middle East, and South Asia. And from there, I uh, became the uh, director of uh, DeVry University in Miami, Florida. And then I uh, came to Texas uh, with Nielsen Media Research. Uh, I'm bilingual, I speak Spanish, and uh, they wanted me in the San Antonio Hispanic market. So that's how I got to Texas. At the same time, I got an offer to teach at uh, Uh, University of Texas at San Antonio and also at uh, Shriner University. So I I did that. And for a while there, I was basically working three jobs, working for Nielsen, working for Shriner University, working for UTSA in San Antonio. And after a couple years, that got to be a bit much. So I really, really liked Shriner University. I I liked uh, what they were doing up here. And so I decided uh, to make this uh, my home. And I've been here now, uh, this is my 20th year at Schreiner University. What's your current role at Schreiner? I am the, well, I have a couple roles actually right now. Uh, I'm the director uh, of the MBA program here at Schreiner University. I'm also the chair of the uh, graduate school of uh, business here. And um, I'm also, uh, involved in the military science programs here uh, with Schreiner Institute. Uh, I'm the academic uh, director. Uh, You know, a lot of these, you know, uh, Schreiner Institute and the Air Force ROTC, which is what we have, um, cannot award college credit. They have to have an academic in the mix. And so I perform that function here. I'd like to ask you a little bit about the Shriner University MBA program. I've been looking at it. Uh, I moved here in April, and uh, what struck me was a couple of things. Uh, number one, um, this podcast is a part of a network that's generally compliance and business ethics, and it struck me that there's a strong business ethics component to the MBA program, but I wanted you to maybe describe uh, what the MBA program is, uh, who it's geared towards both in terms mm-hmm. of students but also for uh, working a, a professional career thereafter. Sure. Well, we, uh, we when we created the MBA here about 15 years ago, um, we looked at who our market would be. You know, we're kind of isolated up here in, in Texas Hill Country. And uh, if we had a traditional MBA program here, we'd probably burn through the available local students here. So we had to look outside the the region here. So we constructed an MBA program based on a couple things. One was feedback that we were getting from regional businesses and historical problems that businesses have. Um, And the number one thing that kept coming back to us from these uh, executives was that uh, they felt that 
undergraduates were not getting enough um, training in ethics. And their thoughts were that ethics can turn a company upside down very quickly. I mean, I, we can only point to the Enron case here in Texas. You know, the seventh largest uh, company in the world had leadership ethical problems, and they are no more now. You know? They went from seventh largest to nothing. And so the lack of ethics or a misunderstanding of ethics uh, can cause great damage to a company. And so we felt that we would surround our program with that particular theme. That's how it started. Uh, we, we did it at the undergraduate level too. It's not just our graduate program that's in ethical leadership. Our undergrad business programs are part of that as well. So uh, in addition to the uh, sub-quantitative component of the MBA, there's also uh, on a, uh, maybe it's almost a humanities component because you talk about leadership, you talk about uh, organizational skills, you also talk about organizational psychology. I was wondering if you could say a few words about that component or those components of your MBA program. Sure. Uh, what we're trying to do is, is create people who are flexible, versatile, vers versatile, excuse me, and um, are able to work within organizations or companies uh, on that flexible basis. Um, you know, the MBA for many years became a very specialized uh, entity, and we felt that that's not what the workplace is. The workplace uh, today is very lean, uh, sometimes you're expected to do many things, some, some of them within your purview, sometimes just on the edge of your purview. Um, I mean, that's, that's the way we operate here. You know, I, I, I deal with many things, including military science. Uh, I have to have those abilities. And so we have a potpourri of, of types of courses in the MBA program that uh, addresses not only the quantitative side of the MBA, but also the qualitative uh, to help people fit into companies and become leaders. Leadership is a very varied thing. Is that all also part of the feedback you receive from not so much local businesses, but perhaps businesses in the Hill Country uh, to Austin, San Antonio, as opposed to uh, larger mm -hmm. multinational corporations? Oh, yes. Yes. In fact, that's our market, really. Uh, within a 200 mile radius of, of Colonel, Texas here. Uh, even though it's an online program, most of your students come within a 200 mile radius, about 80% of them do. Uh, and so Texas really is our, our apple here. You know, we, we look at Austin, we have a lot of students from the Valley. Um, we are a Hispanic serving institution also. And so we have about 40 to 50% of our students are Hispanics. So we, we have a mix of, of types of students, and they have a mix of employers. We have software folks that work up in Austin. We have uh, lots of medical people come through our program, including physicians. Um, we, uh, we've trained uh, quite a few of the nurse practitioners from Fredericksburg at Hill Country Memorial Hospital. Um, nurses are gearing more towards the MBA now versus maybe an MSN because especially nurse practitioners can operate underneath their own license as long as they're in contact with their physician and they wind up not only seeing patients but they have to manage the programs. That really requires an MBA and some of the skills that they learn in an MBA. And the same with doctors. I had a, I had a physician uh, come through the program uh, two years ago. I asked him, well, why are you getting an MBA? And he said, well, in medical school, they teach us all about patient management, patient care, but they don't teach us daily squat about how to run our practice. And I spend more than half my time trying to run the practice here versus seeing patients. And so an MBA is, is very valuable to us. Sounds like law school. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering if you could say a few words about the military science program here at Shriner. 
Yes, uh, Shriner Institute. Uh, it's a kind of a varied program. Uh, we have an outreach program to veterans. Uh, we have quite a few veterans uh, attending school here. Um, we have a Air Force ROTC program that we uh, run in conjunction with the uh, uh, University of Texas at San Antonio. Um, we also have Shriner Institute. Our Shriner Institute is a one-year program uh, preparatory school for uh, students who desire to go to the U.S. military academies, you know, West Point, Air Force Academy, Naval Academy. Um, and then we have, uh, we have uh, a Bachelor of Arts in Business, uh, which is geared towards the military, the active military guard and reserve. Uh, it's more of a, a degree completion program you know, they get transferred, say, to San Antonio, and they were studying in Langley Air Force Base on the East Coast. Well, now they they want to complete their degree. They have 60 hours, and so they, they come to our BA program, and it's flexible enough to allow them to fit in and complete their degree. How does someone apply to the uh, Schreiner MBA program? Quite easily. Go to our website. <laughs> and sign on from there you know it's it's uh it'll, it'll walk you right through it you have something on your website entitled the shriner university university premium partners could you tell us a little bit about what that program is and how sure. it works into the mba program right it's kind of a two-part program uh, one part is uh, towards our own students that graduate with uh, say a bba in business of some sort uh, accounting, finance, marketing, management, uh, cybersecurity. Uh, they become automatic premier partners of Shriner University, and we give them the same scholarship that we give to corporations, that we give to uh, government agencies, the U.S. military, that become partners with us as a university. Uh, it's about a it's about a $10,800 scholarship, and it drives the cost of the MBA down below $11,000. You know, you do have some uh, book costs. You know, most of our books are online, and we try to keep the cost of the books down below $130. So you can get an MBA at Shrine University as a partner, as a premier partner, for less than $11,000 total. So you told us uh, at the start of this podcast you've been here at Shriner for 20 years mm -hmm. and been working on this program for quite some time, too. I was wondering if you might take a few minutes to look down the road into the future. And where do you see the MBA uh, program at Shriner or, or really just the MBA going in 2025 or beyond or mm -hmm. perhaps even broadening out to what do you think business students will need uh, to run a not just a 21st century corporation, but almost a mid 21st century corporation. Although that scares me to say that. Well, we're, it's interesting you asked that because we are in discussions about modifying our current MBA program uh, with the leadership of the university here. Uh, <clears throat> about two years ago, we noticed that a lot of our uh, competitors, you know, other universities, were starting to specialize their MBAs, and uh, so you know. We're looking at uh, that same possibility, maintaining the ethical leadership uh, focus, but also offering opportunities for uh, an accounting degree, for example, an MBA in accounting, uh, marketing, you know, finance. Uh, accounting is very important because uh, an accounting student, for example, that comes out of Shriner or any other university, if they want to sit for the Texas CPA exam, they have to have 150 credit hours. Uh, coming out of an undergrad program, they have 120. So our, our program here gives them those extra hours. It currently does right now, but we would rather focus it purely on accounting, okay? So where half, half the program would be ethical leadership, sort of a core, and then the other half the program would be concentrating in accounting. That gives them the 150 hours they can sit for the CPA exam. We're also looking at uh, being a Hispanic-serving institution. Uh, we're toying with the idea of um, 
a same MBA program but delivered in Spanish language. Uh, why that? Well, it's becoming harder and harder, especially with COVID, uh, for students in South America, Central America, Mexico, to get student visas to come to the United States to attend U.S. colleges. The other issue is many of them uh, do not speak good enough English to pass the TOEFL exams that are required for most U.S. colleges and universities. So, and then they have to leave their companies, their corporations, or their businesses uh, for anywhere from one to two years to come to the United States to study. So their company kind of loses them for that period. So if we provide a, a MBA in Spanish language to these people, they don't have to leave their companies. They don't have to leave their homes or families. They don't have to worry about getting uh, student visas. Um, they can take the program purely, fully online and uh, in, Spanish, in their native language. Uh, in uh, learning about you in preparation for this podcast and in uh, visiting with you today, I've learned you have worked in a variety of different organizations, from the military to the government to private practice to your academia, or I should say the private sector, mm -hmm. academia, U.S. Com uh, public corporations. And so you've seen lots of different leadership styles. Yes. I was wondering uh, if you could maybe end with uh, a few words about where you see the leadership style in uh, corporate America going and how the Shriner MBA program is really helping students to prepare mm -hmm. for that the same uh, 2025 or even beyond? Well, I would say, and, and my colleagues here at Shriner University, you know, we, we study leadership uh, as, our, as doctorates. We uh, do research and our focus is leadership here. Uh, Dr. Coleman, who just popped his head in here a little while ago, Dr. Salter, uh, we are colleagues in leadership studies. Um, one of the things that uh, we are intrigued with is transformative leadership. And we feel that the future of, of leadership uh, in the United States, you got to realize that the United States is just one culture here. There's many other cultures around the world where <laughs> transformative might not work. But at least in the United States, in, in Hill Country here, transformative leadership is is what we think is the way to go. Dr. Woodall, unfortunately we are near the end of our time for this episode. We're going to link mm -hmm. to Schreiner University and the MBA program in our show notes. I wanted to thank you for taking the time to visit with me and I hope we can continue this conversation. Well, thank you for visiting us here at Schreiner University. We always uh, enjoy people visiting us here in Hill Country. This is Tom Fox. Thank you so much for listening to this edition of the Hill Country Podcast. I'm going to link to uh, Boston um, website in the show notes. So if you need any uh, computer or tech services, I suggest you give Robbie a call. I'm always looking to tell the story of the people, places, and things of the Texas Hill Country. If you'd like to be on the Hill Country Podcast, give me a shout um, at tfox at tfoxlaw.com or you can ring me at 832-744-0264. This is Tom Fox. The Hill Country Podcast is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network.